Well, bless the Lord, everybody. Everybody, bless the Lord. Praise God. Good to be with you one more time to share the gospel of Christ and encourage your most holy faith in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We know that God is downloading greater revelation and understanding of the word that is declared to us. And as we heed his voice and, and listen intently, grace is being released to us to understand even more. Praise God. And we, we want to get into the word tonight in that word that God has given us, which is the word of the kingdom. Amen. And everybody ought to know Jesus is and know about what inheritance we have in him with the saints. Amen. And we need to keep declaring that that is this, the saints can know that as the days become more perilous and more challenging that each person will be mindful that they have something worth fighting for. And they should give their all to obtain it amen and to be secure and secure themselves in that position in christ jesus praise god we're gonna pray come on with those hands to the lord and says acknowledge your heavenly father in the house father we just thank you for another occasion to be here once more to declare your word the word of the kingdom amidst a dying crooked and dark world that persons will know there is hope in the lord when all other governments and all other authorities fail and all other powers fail and all other uh, uh, the leadership and rulership in the earth fail your rulership and leadership will never fail and we want persons to know you are still revealing your glory in the earth you are still revealing your glory in the hearts of men you're still revealing your glory hallelujah over all your creation and we want the eyes to, of their understanding to be open to embrace the truth. That the truth will set them free and reposition them for greater results. Fruitful and one that will be glorious. Bringing glory to you and revealing your full purpose and intent in their lives. We look to you as we give you the praise and the glory tonight. We pray that every thought, every imagination, every feeling, every view that exalts itself against your knowledge will be brought into captivity and to obedience and that indeed every thought will be subjected to you right now and that grace will be released for greater understanding and application of the word yielding greater results that is pleasing unto you. We give it a praise and a glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you all for coming and for those who are joining us online, thank you for taking the time to do so, we aim to give you the word, the word of the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus called it. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 13, he calls it the word of the kingdom. And he reveals himself as the sower that goes about with the word. And the word that he's sowing is the word of the kingdom. When he was explaining that to his disciples, he gave that example and said, Therefore, the parable of the soul says, Hear the parable of the soul, and anyone hears the word of the kingdom. When what? Anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one, he says, comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This, he says, is he who received the seed by the way. He said. So it says, The word that is actually going to sow is the word of the, the word of the kingdom and we want persons to know that's the word jesus always preached hallelujah there are times he had to answer about himself in saying i'm the good shepherd i'm the way i'm the truth i'm the life no man come to the father by me and and saying that he's the door that he is the one sent by the father which is referring to the christ the anointed messenger of christ all these was not really the message that was just to defend the one who bring in the message because oftentimes persons would come with doubt or unquestioning the integrity of the one who's bringing the message so oftentimes we'd have to answer for himself and say this is who i am but the message wasn't really about saying to them this is who i am the message was really about the kingdom hallelujah but he had to reveal and authenticate that he is a true messenger therefore to authenticate the trueness of the message that he brought and the message that he brought was the 
gospel of the kingdom and that's why it says when one goes and, and bring that gospel he says anyone don't understand of course the enemy will take advantage of them and jesus he says in matthew 4 verse 23 how is matthew 4 verse 23 jesus went about all galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching what the gospel of the kingdom and you see that in all the synagogues jesus went one thing he kept preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people is what follows in other words a person believe in the gospel the good news of the kingdom god's governance and rule in their midst then of course they'll experience supernatural miracles and signs and wonders and deliverance in their life because that is the manifestation of the kingdom in their lives but they must believe the gospel you cannot not believe the gospel and want to get those benefits the benefits comes from believing in the gospel amen so we believe in the messenger that is christ the preacher and also in the message hallelujah so it's not we cannot say we just believe the preacher then not believe the message because the preacher is there with the message praise god and so he, he said that that was what he was doing also in matthew 9 verse 35 has the same report repeated in the same book matthew we use those two quotes because we know sometimes the, the same quote is referred in other gospels but it's not necessarily that it's the same thing being repeated they're just saying it's from another book but we use from the same book to quote to let you realize that it was repeated in the same book that this is what he went everywhere doing it's not something that was just repeated in another gospel or another writer from the gospel but of course even in the same he says jesus went about all cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing so we see the same message being relayed in matthew 4 verse 23 and matthew 9 verse 35 so we notice matthew's highlighting this is what jesus did everywhere he went every occasion he had to preach this was the message he was carrying amen and we want persons to know that and and the, the, there's much talk on that because it is belief in the power and the demonstration and manifestation of the power of the kingdom that really brings true salvation amen praise god and we know that jesus also spoke about they, they gave that instruction to his disciples that they should go and preach that same message that is matthew chapter 10 he says verse 7 he told him what to preach and he told him what to do he says as you go preach saying the message that what did not change the message the message is about the kingdom of god or the gospel of the kingdom is about the kingdom of heaven operating in their midst the same kingdom that operates in heaven is also operating in the earth and it's called the kingdom of heaven synonymously spoken of as also the kingdom of god hallelujah so oftentimes when it says kingdom of god or kingdom of heaven it's still referring to the kingdom and so when he says the gospel of the kingdom is talking about the kingdom of god or the kingdom of heaven is the same thing it's not two different things hallelujah but when we say kingdom of heaven we're not talking about heaven it's really talking about the kingdom known from heaven praise god like when we said the the jesus of nazareth we don't we're not talking about nazareth we're talking about jesus of nazareth in other words he's known as that jesus from nazareth but he's not here publicizing really about nazareth <laughs> come on now. the same way the gospel is not here publicizing about heaven it's really publicizing about the kingdom and that's why oftentimes you see say the word of the kingdom amen praise god and he told them that they should declare this message and do uh, the works that comes with the message heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons freely you have received freely give in other words the work is there to confirm the word the work is there to what confirm the word and people using faith would see 
the manifestation of that word. Now that doesn't happen with everybody who come and hear the gospel of the kingdom. It happens with those who are there who exercise faith. Because we know that Jesus went preaching everywhere. And yet still he says, even in the town, hometown where he was in Nazareth, where they said they knew him from, the word of God said he could do no miracles there because of their unbelief. So they believe in, in Nazareth that yes, the kingdom would come, but they didn't believe this was the preacher that would bring it. And they didn't believe this was the preacher, the word that this preacher was saying actually would bring about the kingdom in their lives. And because of that, it restricted what they should see. And in fact, they said, what you're doing other nation, you, you, you come and do it here. <laughs> Jesus said, one day you'll be saying that. But he said, you're not going to get it because of what unbelief. He says, so they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without what? Honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there. Why? Exactly. So people can say, I believe the, the prophet, I believe the preacher. But then do they believe the message? If they believe the message, that is confirmation that they believe the preacher. But you cannot just say, I believe the preachers. I like how he sound, I like how he look, I like what he do, but you don't really connect with the message. That, of course, he says, dishonors the preacher. How what he calls the prophet is honored by people receiving his prophetic message. Amen. And this was what he was declaring about the word of the kingdom of god's reign and sovereign rule over all creation come on and of course jesus made further reference that is this gospel that will actually usher in the end in matthew 24 verse 14 it says and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and he says when that is done then the end will come come on so it is the gospel that will actually bring in the end <laughs> this gospel of the king that will actually what bring in the end when it is declared as a witness to all the nations as a what witness then the end will come come on now hallelujah so we know that it is saying this is what will make the shift as the word of god said that it was noah who preached in the flood uh, it's now that what preach in the flood now we know that it is the word that noah got that brought in the flood and it was still declaring about god's governance over the earth that despite all man choose to live wicked and sinful god would not have it the world running that way hence the flood came hello so it was still talking about god's governance that man would not be allowed to do his own thing on god's earth and think that that's just how it goes as they say today world continue the same way <laughs> it's not true amen he says for if god that's second peter 2 yes second peter 2 verse 4 says for if god did not spare the angels who sinned no, no. I like this passage in terms of this saying, the, the, this, when it says kingdom of heaven, he's saying the same way God rule in heaven is the same way God rule in the earth. And this passage of scripture is actually showing what God did to those who were in heaven. The angels that are already in heaven that sin, did they remain? No. He says they, even in heaven, God doesn't allow that. And not only in heaven, but he went further to say, not in the earth either. Look at that. He says, for if, the, if God did not spare the angels who sinned, angels sinned in heaven. And God did not spare them. What did God do? Cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. And he says, then he moves from heaven, no one speaking about the earth, in verse 5, and said, and God did not spare the ancient world. He's talking about the earth in its original state, pre the flood, before the flood came. 
because after the flood came the land structure and and the, uh, the, the whole atmosphere of that place changed regarding to the destructive nature of the flood that overcome and took over the whole planet come on so it calls it the ancient world the what the ancient world he said god did not spare it but only save who now one of eight people a preacher of what of righteousness bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly say that preacher of righteousness was preaching against sin and saying that god would not have it here in the earth and said his message of preaching of god's governance over the earth that it actually brought in the flood and brought an end to that ancient world of how it operated and started a new one with noah one of eight people that was there in that time of that flood come on he and his family was saved huh and he speak again further away from the whole world not being spared now he goes to a smaller example and that is of Sodom and Gomorrah speaking of two cities so one point he's talking about all heaven that point he's talking about the whole world and that point is now we reduce it to a smaller example of two cities then he says turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes this was not flood now this was fire so this is a more extreme measure than even water and he's saying no because this means of water uh, still had the earth in its original form the structure was still there though the land mass and appearance of it changed but fire he says that came on Sodom and Gomorrah removed it from the map entirely so we don't see that is up his re response to sin becoming lighter i'm saying that for those who have been taking this mindset that somehow the, the grace of god with christ dying on the cross is just for us to get forgiveness of sin so you can sin god there's forgiveness it is not so there is forgiveness but there's a call for repentance it's not forgiveness that brings salvation it is repentance that lead to salvation and i'm on the point that out to you tonight because that is why the kingdom of the the gospel of the kingdom message has in it repent and believe the gospel because there's a repentance that must manifest for you to walk in true faith amen and it says turning the cities of sodom and gomorrah into what ashes what did he do he condemned them to destruction making an end of what making an example rather making an example to who to those who act so you know that there's an afterward because this destruction didn't take place on a world scale but just for two cities and but he said they were destroyed they were wiped off the map and they are there as an example to those who were left behind and who would follow those who afterwards would what live ungodly so god wants us to live godly and godly is saying like him after his ways huh he has a way in which we should live in a way that complements and agrees with his way and order of how things should be come on and that is referring still to the kingdom god's kingdom god's governance being revealed in the earth is showing that he wants it to be a demonstration of righteousness and godliness and faithfulness and truth huh? and holiness because that is the reflection of his nature and operation in heaven and it is must also be the operation and nature in the earth come on somebody and so he said even with delivering lot he says he delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked for that what that righteous man come on so one scale we see 
eight person delivered consider this one person we see eight person delivered in the flood with Noah next point we see in one <laughs> it don't look like it getting lighter as the examples are being revealed of God's judgment against things that go opposed in his way his rule his authority his kingdom for he says for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by what seeing and hearing their lawless deeds then the lord knows what how to deliver the godly so the lord referred to that man lot as righteous lot as righteous man and as godly man three terms that today the world reject that anybody really godly anybody nobody really righteous <laughs> and nobody really is holy all right with god everybody is sinner but that was not how the scripture referred there of of lot nor of abraham nor of noah all the examples were showing that they lived in a way that pleased god and god saved them and so the writer says here then the in verse 9 of second peter 2 he says then the lord knows how to deliver the godly it is not the ungodly deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust or the ungodly under punishment for the day of judgment they respond to the ungodly and to the godly is not the same nor is what is reserved for them the same hallelujah and that is but is pointed out in scripture from the beginning of time even until now but some people somehow believe over the time god has changed and the rules have changed and now we are free we are not held to that standard anymore we can live and god understand the conditions of where we are living that these things will happen all we got to do is just love god and praise him and tell him that we will do better next time and that should do it but that's not true come on because he says the, the, what god did there was an example to those who would live ungodly who afterwards would what so there's an afterward in other words god intended that when they see those demonstrations of his wrath against sin that they would stop not that they would continue and said there is forgiveness that is that kind of belief and thought is from the devil and god jesus regards it as one from the devil come on now so he says especially those who walk according to what that walk according to the flesh in the lust of what and cleanness and despise authority come on when he says despise authority he wasn't talking about uh the, the worldly authority though they still should have some respect for those who are in worldly position and power but i'm sure that when he spoke about Saddam and Gomorrah, he wasn't talking about the king of Saddam and Gomorrah because we know that even abraham said he wouldn't take a shoes lace from the king of Sodom and gomorrah not even a shoes lace he says i don't want from you less when i become rich abraham says that you said it's you made abraham rich in other words you use it as a political campaign to say you know it was under my jurisdiction that abraham got that and abraham was saying no this came from god through a godly authority man called melchizedek that laid hands on me bless me pronounced the word of god over my life and i tied it to him and it's coming to me come on he was talking about god's government and not man's crooked government so when he speak about but those you know despise authority even the devil have authority even the devil have power hallelujah but he's not talking about the uh, honoring his power he's talking about godly power godly authority because then it, it remember it wasn't the king of sodom that was preaching against unrighteousness 
It was in the king of Sodom that heart was vexed daily by seeing and hearing what they were doing there. No, it was, it says, righteous lot. Huh? That righteous man vexed his soul daily by what he both heard and saw. Huh? Praise God. Huh? Tormented his soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Come on now. And so we see that the example is there that he spoke of righteous lot. Huh? And he spoke of, of righteous Noah that brought in the flood. That is the message he declared brought in the flood. We know that there are earthly rulers in the time, but he never spoke of those earthly rulers in saving the whole world. He spoke of Noah, who was regarded as a prophet of God. He spoke of Lot, who was regarded as a man of God, a righteous man. He spoke of, of uh, come on. He spoke of Noah and Lot and Abraham. Those are persons of faith. Hallelujah. And it says, they, they despised the authority because they gave the word, but they did not listen to them. And it's who really have the word that have the power to bring in the judgment. Come on now. And it says, they are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to what? Speak evil of dignitaries are those who live godly and upright in the land. It's not those who just have power. Because many people are poor, they don't have no dignity. They are very immoral in their standards and their ways. So it's not just about having power and title and high position in the land. It's about the quality life they live. So it says, we are as angels who are greater in power. Angels who are what? Greater in power and might. Do not bring a reviling accusation against who? against those dignitaries against those what they call glorious ones are holy ones righteous ones huh? those who please the lord hallelujah he honors them because they honor him hallelujah and he says not not even the angels he said that are mighty more mighty greater in power and in might he says they don't bring reviling accusations against those who God appoints in the land as truly spiritual leaders. Huh? He says, but these, like natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, they lift their tongue quickly, man. They speak evil of the things they do not understand. Remember, who doesn't understand? The one who doesn't respond in faith to the message of the ones God sent to declare the word of the kingdom and he says anyone who don't understand the word of the kingdom what the devil comes and snatches that word away from his heart and of course he plunged into darkness for he will perish without that word come on somebody the same way he said they become like natural brute beasts less than human beings like a wild beast in its natural habitat. They, they just running up and down wildly. Like they're meant to be caught and destroyed. Speaking evil of things they do not understand. And will utterly perish in their what? Their own corruption. He never say oh that's how every man is. They'll be saved because God love them and forgive them. No he says they will utterly perish in their own corruption. Because what? They have rejected the message and rejected God's messengers. Not everyone is God's messengers, but who truly bear the word of the kingdom are. And they must make a distinction between who is and who is not. Eh? Hallelujah. And so it says, I will receive, and they will what? Receive what? They'll receive the wages. He says, their unrighteous behavior comes with a payday and he calls it wages and they said they will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it what as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime they don't mind doing this is this is their life man this is what they call living it up living their life and say it's my life my life my life Nobody can tell me how to live it, but they didn't give themselves life. 
the one who gave them life have authority to say how it should be lived and they of course walking in opposition to that have now attracting the consequences that follow he says they are spots and blemishes carousing in their own what deception lies and deceitful ways while they feast with you they will come and say yes man we serve in the same god <laughs> come on but their eyes are full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin they they make promises of season but they don't cease come on come on now that's why it says is this the carousing in their own deception while they feast with you they want to have a little of the world and a little of god same time huh? that's that's what they call a perverted mixture they want to be true worshipers of god while they are sinners and no sinner can be a true worshiper because sin violates the very heart of what worshiping god is about so you cannot be a true worshiper and still continue to sin come on now that's the very reason why christ came that you would be freed from sin and become true worshipers of god eh? become a part of his family join ears with him and ears of god and of course your place in the kingdom would be reserved for you huh so it says having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin enticing who they, they entice unstable souls souls in the house that are not grounded in the message they have other interests while they are there with the message so it's not the message alone they're listening they have other interests that keeps drawing them away that makes them unstable and i told you already god doesn't build on anything unstable god calls because that is what they call double-minded they are not only mindful of the word but they are also mindful of the worldly things and they're trying to make a, a quite a balance between the two they want because they want to have the best of both worlds come on they have a heart trained in what in covetous practice they're always hungering and lusting for something else they can never be satisfied they have they are, their hearts are trained in covetous practices and they are what accursed children huh and that sound like a blessing i guess that's why they they don't like this word it sounds like it dooming everybody that doing this thing of course it dooming everybody that do this thing that's why they wants you to repent <laughs> hallelujah the call for repentance is not optional it's mandatory for everyone who wants to be a part of the kingdom of god amen anyone who wants to enter the kingdom of god cannot be going against god's way of doing things which is righteousness holiness godliness huh hallelujah things that are agree in agreement with the word of god and the leadership of his holy spirit are of no place or accommodation for sin amen praise god huh so it says they have what they have forsaken the right way and what gone astray following what the way of balaam sons of beer huh the son of beer he says who oh, love the wages of unrighteousness he loved the wages of unrighteousness he's talking about money <laughs> you know he, he, he loves to prophesy and get word from the lord but of course it's not the prophesy and get word from the lord is his main interest his main interest is what he can cash in from it and he says that was causing that man though being called a prophet to malfunction to what malfunction in other words, work against the natural way in which he should operate in fact the word of god calls it the the madness of the prophet the madness he says a dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice had to reach a wild beast god had to put the voice of a man in to restrain his madness his unsound behavior praise god 
is what unsound behavior that was not fitting as one who's a prophet and he says those who forsake the right the right way and gone astray following the way of balaam the son of your following his way that not not god's way god's way don't bring no madness of no prophet it's the devil's way bring that way and many who choose to practice that way will fall in the same category and will also suffer the consequences of doing so hello somebody he says these are wells without water clothes carried by a tempest for whom is reserved what ah, that don't sound like the kingdom reserved for them at all it says for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever god condemns sin we cannot continue to sin and said god condemns sin but he loves us so we will escape because he loves us god doesn't love us too much oh uh, somebody would say jesus you love me too much oh to do that anything happen to me no god loves everybody and many will perish because of their resistance and opposition to what his love requires of them because the love comes with a requirement Ah, the love comes with a correction it comes with chastening it comes with discipline it calls for repentance it's not just love you just as you are and you can stay the same way you would no this love brings about the purpose hallelujah and righteousness of god in your life and if that is not being obtained then of course you will see the opposite of the results which he says the wrath of god will be revealed against you huh so we see from that scripture god has a way of doing things god what as and his way of doing things is what he's coming and declaring to us about his kingdom that we can learn those ways and be partners with him in the governance of his kingdom because he's, he's chosen to make us partners with him part of his family hallelujah part of his rulership but because he's not giving the kingdom or the age to come to angels but he has given it to man hallelujah so he really has included us in this and this was a problem from day one the angel well one angel particular which is satan really wanted that dominion and seeing that god had not purpose for angel to receive it he's the one that started that rebellion and sin in heaven and one third of the angels fell with him come on so we know then that he desired to have that kingdom that it be subjected to him but god didn't give it to angels huh? god did not give it to angels who god gave it to he gave it to man praise god there it is in hebrews 2 verse 5 to 7 it says for he has not put the world to come god is that he he says he has not put the world to come of which we speak referring to the kingdom of god he says we did not speak he's not put that world to come in subjection to angels come on it's not angel he's giving it to come on no. but it's to us it's to god it's to christ and to those who are joint ears with christ Harry he says in partnership with him through obedience being discipled by him his word and his holy spirit yeah he says but one testify in a certain place saying what what is man because his man is a reference of who he said he's handing it over to that you should take care of him and have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with what glory and honor and set him the man over the works of your hands that's the kingdom right there set him over the works of your hands over all you have created you have put under him come on and if he says it is not given to angels yes he has given the angels charge to watch over us but he says they are there to watch over us to guard us protect us because the body and their spirit that they have been made with is stronger than us with our bodies that we were made in this fleshly body is far frail to the body of an angel 
And the body of angels can do far more damage than the body of man can. But God promised a new body to man that is fitting his position. So he's not going to end up with this body at the end of the world to, to get the world, what he says, the world to come that he says is subjected to him. Because Paul referred to that world and said, hey, we are being prepared for that. Huh? Second Corinthians 5 verse 5. Yeah, he says we are being prepared for that. He said this is what God is preparing us for. He was prepared us for us for for this very thing. He says is God who also has what given us the Spirit as a guarantee. The Spirit is there bearing witness with our spirit until we come to that place where the redemption of the body, the body is changed from mortal to immortality is changed from a physical body to a spiritual body he says and in that position he says we then will judge our rule over angels and paul spoke about that in first corinthians 6 hallelujah verse 3 i believe or 2 or 3 he said he had to say to the saints there in corinth that was going to the unrighteous judge in the land to um, settle matters between them. I was saying, no man, you need to understand you are the one that's going to judge the world and even know that you're going to judge angels. Said it in verse 2 and 3 says, do you not know that saints will judge the world? And if the world be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? He says, how much more? He says, if you're going to judge angels, he says, how much more should you judge things that pertain to this life? Things that pertain to what? So if he said this life, there's another one. Come on. And that's why he said the world to come or the age to come. Holiday is talking about a new environment that we will live in. And God has promised and declared that that environment is coming in which only the righteous will dwell huh so we don't want to be excluded well i know i don't want to be excluded out of that amen <laughs> so i think and i believe there's not it's not only a thing with me but it's something that god has for everyone who desires to be a part of that kingdom they know that they have to get in order and get in right standing with the king to obtain such a promise amen Praise God. And it is also said in 1 John 3, verse 1 to 3. Hallelujah. He said that that's the benefit we receive in becoming children of God. Huh? He, John spoke about it and said, Behold, what man of love the Father has what? Bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. And notice he didn't say, Is the whole world is children of God? Because he said in the next statement, Therefore, the world does not know us, us who? The children of God. The world doesn't know the children of God. And it tells us why. Because it did not know him. The world doesn't know him, so it won't know the children of him. So that's why they count everybody the same. But the Lord doesn't speak that we are about his children. So that's why this writer John says, Beloved, that's what he calls the children of God. Beloved, now, when? Now we are children of God. And he said, it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. He's talking about the kind of body and, and appearance we will have. Because the appearance we have now is as men. We look like every human being on the road. But he said, wait till this body changes. See if you look the same. Because he says, the change has already happened in the spirit. But there's a one coming in the body. The outer man is what is referred to. That will come, he says. That will reveal that we are truly children of God. We will not just look as we are now as children of men in this human body. But then we look as children of God. Because God's body doesn't look like man's body at all. And you'll soon find out that. <laughs> Amen. And he says, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. And he says, we have not seen that yet. But he said, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be what? 
we shall be like him now all those songs they singing and praising and worship nobody like you lord will have to scratch and put in the back shell because we shall be like him yes 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 and he wants it to be so that's not something we're imposing on him that's a promise he made to us that when he reveals himself we will look just like our daddy praise god hallelujah and he says for we shall see him as he is we shall what see him as he is he says we have not seen him as he is now uh, what we're we waiting to see hallelujah and he says in verse 3 everyone who has this hope in him everyone who what has this hope in him not in themselves but in him what do they do purifies himself just as he is the very thing that person say we can't be pure like him that is exactly what the kingdom is saying here word of the kingdom is saying you can be pure just as him because the same nature in him is given to you through his spirit to operate in the same way hallelujah just as he is pure says that's why that spirit is given to you as a guarantee as a what guarantee so it says it is to ensure the fitness and readiness of the product and the delivery date so everything that is the dear as a guarantee is to ensure say it is, that date is covered for till the time required or appointed amen so he said the spirit is given to us as a guarantee for that hello and that's what he spoke about in second corinthians 1 to 5 he's speaking there for persons to understand that this body they're in is referred to as a tent but the body that god has for us is referred to as a building now a tent is a temporary dwelling but a building is a permanent dwelling he's saying this body then is temporary and the temporary nature of this body is spoken of speaking that we will still experience death in this body he says we taste of it in this body but we know that there's a body ah uh, we know that what there's a body or what he calls a building from god a house not made with hands in other words human beings didn't come together for that body to be reproduced he says this was the work of god and he said this body is not temporary it's eternal in heaven it is what it is what eternal in heavens he says for in this we groan in other words while we in this body we groan for that body every believer that believes the message groans for that body and that's why we don't tremble and shake and fear and grip sheet and they have to tear it out of our hands because we don't want to leave this body no we know what the kingdom of god says about us and our lives that we have been promised a better one you got it that's why we are not terrified by death hallelujah because anyone who's terrified by death of course does not believe in eternal life you get what i'm saying so it says for in this we groan earnestly desiring earnestly huh so they said the groaning don't just happen so is a groaning in the spirit because the spirit that he has given us as a guarantee is in there groaning with us say you know you need a better body than this to, my god come on huh i know you need a better body than this man this body is not it he says earnestly designed to be what clothed with our habitation from heaven notice he says which is from heaven he didn't say it is heaven you're not going to be clothed with heaven he's talking about the body that he has reserved for you in heaven and saying that one is there for you to be clothed with huh and he says you must walk in such a way fitting that you'll be clothed with that body so you don't find yourself naked find yourself without it because if you come back with this body you know it's still not going last 
it is going to perish and it's going to be destroyed with fire this time come on so it says if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found naked that will not be found without being qualified to receive that body hello so he says for we who are in this tent grown we grown in this one uh, this tent which is temporary is frail delicate and carries uh yeah huh? carries its own bit of trouble and pain and weariness huh? and hurt we, we all that we are this body encounter that it is not something foreign to us who bear this body and it is neither foreign to Christ because he also put on such a body and he knows that death would come with such a body and he didn't run from it and say I'm Christ I'm not dying no you have to taste it because we who bear this body will yeah. come on so he says we who are in this tent growing being what burdened there's a burden not because we want to be unclothed and he says it's not because we want to die it's not what we want to die that's why it says it's not because we want to be unclothed that we step out of the body and and just be spirit he said no but it's because we want to be further clothed we want a more permanent structure a more permanent body for our living here and he says that is soon to come man when what mortality shall be swallowed up by what life now he who has prepared us for this see he's talking there he who has prepared us for this very thing that was that we are going to know is preparation mode for that we are not going through this just to live long in this body get old and drink and eat and die no we say we are being prepared for that age to come huh for that body so if you don't believe in the age to come then you believe say this is it not true and then you know this no run as well as you want to you count yourself hopeless huh and the ball say lord no 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 because you don't have your you are hopeless you, have, you are lack hope without the word that brings faith hello somebody you are lack hope without faith man because and i'm telling you and they, you see when when people were wailing at, at lazarus death, uh, the only time they believe say the only time they believe say jesus had compassion with lazarus dying you know is when jesus wept if jesus don't weep he don't have no compassion so see, they say see there he wept huh? no, so they say, <laughs> see there he wept that means say we really love Lazarus. Because if you're not weeping, oh man, you don't have no love. Eh? But Jesus didn't weep because of Lazarus. Because Jesus already told his disciples when he knew that Lazarus was dead. He says, I'm glad he's dead. How that sound to you? <laughs> so did Jesus become double tongue? One minute in God, next minute in the ball. No. <laughs> because Jesus is saying this was done for God's glory. Yeah. Huh? What was they saying? Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also keep Lazarus' friend from dying? The thing says Jesus' disciples were saying that. It was the religious crowd that didn't believe in his message. Those who believe in his message are the disciples. They weren't saying, oh, we sorry Lazarus dead. When Jesus says, glad he's dead, they were like, yes, I read, come here, we got dead with him. They didn't want to even go down there. Eh? Come on now. Didn't they say that? They said, come, let us go down there and die with him. Because the man dead, in the dead already. 
They know so they won't kill us down there, Lord. So if you make we go down there, what going on to us? Hello? He says, Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is what? Dead. He says, I am glad. Did Jesus say, I'm sorry? No. So he says to them, Lazarus is dead. Because he said, Lazarus is sleeping. They talk, if he's sleeping, all right, make him stay there. When he wake, he wake. But Jesus made it plain to them and said, No. Lazarus is dead and I'm glad for your sakes. I am glad Jesus said that he's dead for your sake. Huh? Oh, that song. I am glad for your sake that I was not there. That you may believe. He says, their thought about, oh, he dead, I just saw you go, nothing more. He says, he, he said, they need to believe. Believe in what? Believe in what? Eternal life. It's not just being raised from the dead is what Jesus is talking to them. Because not everybody raised from the dead will be saved. Not everybody raised from the dead will be saved. Not everybody who's healed will be saved. People will die sick and this will be saved and people live healthy and die and still go hell. So you need to know the message is not about you staying long and healthy in this body. The message is about you having eternal life. Because the life of the sun is in you. Come on somebody. You got it? Man, even people have it mixed up other ways. Uh, they might be not going to agree much and they're not going to find much comfort from me at all. Because I'm not following that line of argument, not that line of reasoning. I'm following what the word of God says. More specifically, what Jesus said. Hello? Watch it, you know. So Jesus says, I'm glad for your sake that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then what did Thomas say? Who's called the twin also? He said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Does that sound very believing? Not at all. Alright, him dead down, they make we go down, you're dead too. Oh, that song. Those were Jesus' disciples, you know. And Jesus was, that's why Jesus didn't send them out to preach yet. <laughs> send them out to be a witness to the world yet because they need to be solidly rooted in a message. Not just by a mental thought, but by the power of God working in them to declare this word. Hello. Because many will say they believe, but when the time comes, you hear a different tune playing. Also, Right, so those who are truly believing the message, the things and times and circumstances around them don't change how they relate to the message because their heart is in it. Hello, somebody. Hello. My God in heaven. So they say, let us go down there, go die. <laughs> and Jesus got on there, and when Jesus got on there, all the people were saying, Martha and, and, and Mary, brothers and sisters of of lazarus were saying man lord if you had been here you see we we beg you a long time to come and you never come and you see it if you was here you wouldn't die because they lack faith come on somebody because they what hallelujah the problem was not that jesus wasn't there the problem was that they're lacking faith in the message that jesus carried and that message is about eternal life the message of the kingdom is always about eternal life why because that's the life that is being offered to us through the message the kingdom life is not merely just to live in in abundance and pleasures of this world is about the quality life you live in God. You can live a hundred years and to have no quality life with God. And you can live 20 and, and 30 years and have quality life with him. 
so it's not about how old you are when you die because how old, old was jesus when he died 33 <laughs> and i'm sure many people live more than 33 that are not living in the will of god so is that unfair that he died so young <laughs> you see when we don't keep our priority on the kingdom then our hearts shift with the world to oppose the message and the messenger and then we also get rejected with the world that's why this word is not for you just to titillate your imagination and your mind to get new information no you have to take it as your reality the word has to become flesh in your spirit that you really believe it is so and know it is so and so that you don't you're not otherwise minded when circumstances arise huh and then the devil made that charge against job he says you know job loses 10 children not one out of ten not two out of ten ten one day now is that just a word of message to 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 give us information or was it a word of faith to stabilize us in trusting God even in difficult times this is not losing one loved one this is losing ten loved ones in a day and, and the devil come and said to the Lord you know in losing ten children he loses wealth come on he loses finances and his goods and on top of that the devil is saying hey but all of that not no i'm to him personally no no i'm to him and he lose 10 children not no i'm to him he says skin for skin no not a nothing because his skin still all right i tell you if you lose 10 children one day is more than skin come on come on now i tell you if you're even raising a pet it's not your child but a pet and you love that pet and that pet die i tell you it's more than just a pet die huh you want to tell me say you in this house and see the care that i give over sheep and if one sheep die, you want to tell me, say, me no feel it. And you alone feel it, so you can't wallow, but me no understand where they got you. You know about caring of sheep. When you want to know about caring of sheep, come sit down with a handbook and pencil and take no from me. But now come tell me, say, because of your mother, brother, or sister, you feel it more than me. Because you weren't caring for their soul, you know. You were there caring for their body. And I was there caring for soul and body. And you too. So you don't tell me what who feel it. Well, you know what feel it. You understand? So you need to understand this ain't no feely feely thing. As if I fall a feely feely thing, I don't even be here every preach. And if I don't be here every preach, because I'm gone pan feely feely, go moan and groan. What going to happen to you? You think say they're going to say, oh, in gone on vacation, go moan and grief. So let's give them a break. At that time, they will come fish for your soul. And have you for lunch, breakfast, and dinner. And whatever dessert left behind. You get what I'm saying to you so had we become feely feely it would actually make with this coming to a dysfunction and a place of not functioning effectively while things need to be tended because what john did in pointing out christ was very vital to christ you know that's why christ said to john i need you to baptize me 
because the baptism water baptism is necessary to point to also the baptism of the holy spirit because both were referred to as what is called born again born of the water and born of the spirit not so so the boat were referred to as what is called born again so jesus is, is authenticating john's ministry which is also authenticating his ministry but when john died jesus never stopped weep and moan said john died i preach jesus i preach same way his mode of operation did not shift though is that man pointing out to the world say he's the christ you get it all right so we got to understand if we don't believe the message it going to show you know no matter what we want people to believe otherwise it going to show because then the, the way we respond to it shows we don't really believe in an eternal life we just believe say this is a life and when this one gone ball because <laughs> you have no other hope and if you have no other hope then he says you are men most miserable and to be pitied and me preach it already and me say it again them the combination they are not for me the combination of being most pitied and most miserable i know my lot that if you want that you can have it me not tell you so you can have it because they are enough for anybody don't you but I'd rather preach to your soul and your spirit so you can rise up and believe the message and the hope and the joy of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. And I know I'm not wrong to do that. So those who want to have it away and say, no, just mumble, make up nice. You can do it. I'm not stopping you. When you're ready to do it, I will take a walk and wait till you're done. And when you're ready to get some sound word, you know if you find me. Eh? Right, so we can talk. Amen. But if it's me going to sit on with you, <laughs> I know me. Because after me, boop, 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 with you, me not going to have nothing for preach to nobody. Immune system tear down, strength tear down, fear tear down. What kind of war make go fight? Do you understand this or is this too real for you? <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's not that I don't love you. Ah, hello. And it's not that I don't love those. Who have gone on from this life but we have to keep focus on the message and what that message is saying to us and not allow anything that happen around that to change how that message speaks to us because what happened to job could have changed how he saw the lord but he says though my flesh be destroyed yet with my eyes i will see god he believed in a life beyond this one and that's what kept him because how do you comfort a man that lose 10 children in one day you only lose one how do you comfort one who lose ten? So you see, when you get up with your eye asking and say no more, you understand more. Sit down and take some notes. The Lord is talking to you from the word for your spirit man to gain a better knowledge of what is happening around you and gain better understanding how to respond to it. Huh? Huh? because your response can qualify or disqualify you uh -huh. come on now so don't take this word for granted come on somebody but we know that he lost everything 
But the one thing he never lost is his faith in the Lord. And the devil came with all his talks, said, man, this man only serving you because of all the good you do for him. But bet you if evil eat him, he will curse you to your face. It was not true. Because the word of God says, in all this, Job held on to his integrity. Uh, Job what? Yeah. I don't know anybody. I've been ministering over 35 years and I don't know anybody that have lost their 10 children in one day. This reference of Job was not written for us to just read and say, eh, it happened to Job. Poor Job, eh? No, it's written for us who have faith in God that even when we suffer great loss and emotional distress by our loved ones leaving, he says, there is still hope in the Lord. Come on now. That word is real. It's not some fairy tale. You got it. Hallelujah. So they came and told him your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. In their oldest brother's house. They have houses that they live in. They were no little children, toddlers running around in the room. They were no grown. So Job would say, man, I have a lot already. I done raise children. It done. But all the Ten left in one day. It says suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness, struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people. And they, that is all of them, are dead. And it says, I alone have escaped to tell your job. What a message to tell him. Come on. And Job's first response is to worship before God. To abase himself. To cry out to God. Where are those that love the Lord so today? Or is this something that is only common to Job? Hallelujah. Come on somebody. Or do we have greater hope in Christ than Job have? Because Job had not learned of Christ's coming. And the word that he brought and dying for sins and rose, in, rose on the third day and ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God. We have that message. Job did not. Job did not. Here I go to prepare a place for you. We heard that. Job did not hear we're going to get a body whose build, whose build and maker is God will not get sick and die. We heard that. So you want to tell me you hear more and you have less faith than Job? It is a sickening thing to watch sometimes or believe or respond. To these things and say they are so sweetly in love with the Lord. I, 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 I look in shame at them. Because I know that could never be it. If I believe that mediocrity. And half hearted service to the Lord. Was true worship. I would not be where I am today. Because I, I was growing in a religious church. That believed that. That kind of behavior was normal. And even there, it couldn't register in my spirit that it was so because of the evidence I see in the scriptures that was not being lived in the church. And I say, if you believe the word, it cannot just be belief. It must transfer, it, convert into lifestyle. You got it? And that's what the kingdom of God is about. When, he, when Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you. He says it's not something up at heaven that you have to go to heaven to experience. He says it's something that must birth and manifest. 
and be realized in your heart. Because if it is not deeply embedded and rooted in you, when the devil comes, he's going to have a field day with you. And I tell you, it's not going to be not nice. Because the devil is the master architect of how to touch you. Know? <laughs> if you want to know a touch of specialists, check the devil. And when he come to touch your soul, and now I got nothing good. Come on now. And if you give him such a foothold to do it, don't think saying why well, show you any mercy and say, Oh, we understand how somebody you love, so we understand where they go and so he's going to bite and chew right down to the bone. When he's done with you, may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Come on. Because it's not a merciful opponent coming that's going to pity your state and give you a blight. That's why we tell you to be sober. Sober speaking of soundness. Not so? Be sober and vigilant. Not laid back and whatever will be will be no be assertive proactive huh? and responsive to the word huh? come on now so he said be sober be vigilant because your adversary you have an adversary did you not know come on and he said your adversary is not about the bad my neighbors and Bad buying or, or, or uh, the betraying staff workers are, are indifferent um, persons in your community. He say, uh uh, he's really the devil. He's the mastermind behind it all. And if you keep get caught up on the faces of who he using, you'll get lost in the crowd. Because you have a million faces to use that are committed to him that he can use against you. So he say, stop watching the faces and understand it's not flesh and blood you're warring against. You get it? Come on now. So he say, your adversary is not taking any witnesses. He's not sparing any that come into his hand. He's walking about like what? A roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, consume, destroy. Come on. So what he said he must do. Resist him. He's not just said no and it done. Persistent steadfast in faith not wavering not giving no loop will for him to get a chance to come in that's why it says steadfast in faith knowing that the same sufferings are what they are experienced by your brotherhood in the world in other words is not you alone going through it Come on. He said the same experience, same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood. All those who in the feet shame similar experiences and suffering. All those who live godly says will suffer persecution. But he says the Lord knows how to deliver them. Huh? He delivered Lot. He delivered Noah and his family. He still know to deliver his people. The Lord knows how to deliver them out of them. All, all of them. Come on. So he said, why should you worry? I heard a songwriter says, why should I worry when God's not worried? If God's not worried, why should I worry? Because who is he trusting in himself or in God? 
So you say, if, I'm, if I put and cast all my cares on him and he's not worried about them, why should I be worried about them? That takes the stress off, doesn't it? And it causes us to enjoy life more daily than we're stressing about things God not stressing about. Because he said in Ephesians 5 verse 1, Be imitators of God as his dear children. What do you say? So if God not stressing, why should you be stressing? Oh, Jesus. And the Lord will be asking you, where is your faith? Come on, somebody. What would he be asking you? Ha, ha, ha. The life we have in Christ is eternal life. Do you believe in that life? Do you believe that life is real? Do you believe that you have it now? That's what the word of God says in 1 John 5 verse 9 to 13. John hammers that truth home to the believers. He hammers that truth home. He's telling them, you must believe this and keep on believing it. Come on. He says, if we receive the witness of men, if men can testify of truth that can be credible, relied on, and truth that reveals itself just as it is as truth. Come on authentic and real he said if we believe the witness of men or the testimony of what men declare that it is true he says god have a testimony the witness of god is greater than even the witness of men huh for he says this is the witness of god which he has testified of his son he says, God has testified this. Is not man testified this. Although some men still disagree. <laughs> we, they, we leave them to their own mind. They are unstable and untaught. He says, if you receive the witness of God, then he says, you will know and believe the testimony he has given of his son. That's all. He says, he who believes in the son of God has what? as the witness in himself remember i said he gives to them his spirit as a guarantee the spirit is given to them as an inner witness that bears witness with the spirit that this is true because it is the spirit of truth the holy spirit come on and he says what he who does not believe him in other words, they don't believe. No, we don't have no eternal life. When we die, we will have it. <laughs> we don't have no eternal life, no. He says, no. He who does not believe him has what? Has made him a liar. Why? Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. He said, it's God that gave that testimony. That's not man merely saying it is so. Any man testifying what God testifying, the testimony is more than just of man because he said it is God that made the announcement and man there that is echoing the announcement that he made. Praise God. Huh? So he says then, and this is the testimony. What's the testimony? What's the testimony? That God has given us what? eternal life and he says and this life is in his son did he say god will be given or will he say god has given us god has given us it is done now he says this is the testimony god has given us this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life is not he's going to give us he has given us and this life is in anyone in his son he says has this life 
anyone any son he says have that life do you believe that anyone long as they're in him they got that life and he says what he who has the son has that life that's eternal life he's talking about he who does not have the son of god he said does not have life or in other words does not have that life and he says these things i have written to you what believe in the name of the son of god that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe huh in the name of the son of god come on somebody now we know not everybody believe that they have it because he said if they believe they have it then they would not be scared and terrified and mourning and ripped up and torn because they lose mortal life mortal life is that human life but he says you have eternal life the god kind of life in christ no sir so he said if you have an eternal life why would you be torn and destroyed so you lose a temporary life which one is greater I'm not hearing you in here. Which one is greater? Right? So, if, if I give to you, if I give to you 10 million US dollar, huh? 10 million US dollar is what? Um, yeah. 143. Huh? 1 1.4. 1.45 billion Jamaican dollar. So that that's not so. It may match good. 10 million US dollar. That what they give it 145. Well, they might give more than that 155. They they really supposed to give us, but they give us 145 by store. <laughs> hallelujah so what is say now now 1.4 billion 1.4 billion now 1.4 billion jamaican dollar is not easy to blow in a short time but i know say hundred thousand dollar can blow in a short time jamaican dollar so if you have one point if i'm giving you one Point four billion Jamaican dollar, and you're losing one hundred thousand Jamaican dollar, and you rip up and torn and broken because you lose one hundred thousand Jamaican. When you have one point four billion Jamaican dollar, then people not gonna laugh after your man. Say you're fool, fool. But you can have so much and lose a little and be torn apart of it unless you don't believe so you have it that's the key that we going to use and show say you really need to believe you know are you hearing me because there's no way when I'm broken up and tore over a dollar when you have a million dollar my god even some of these camera them take, take the money and burn it because they know enough more did they want is a now stop come what we don't say stop not true because they soon get found out lack of power get killed hello but it says what he gives you through christ is eternal the life is given is so it says how then you be torn and dismayed and crushed and over losing mortal life mortal life is temporary life it was always temporary 
It was never eternal. Come on. Hallelujah. So that's why it says mortality is swallowed up in life. Huh? Because it says the life God is giving you is not the life of man you're receiving in Christ. Is the life of God. Hallelujah. And which man would want the life of God? Yeah. Lord Jesus. Come on. Somebody praise him in here. Oh, you have to know what you have, man. Hello, somebody. You have to believe that what you have is real. And the life speaks of the purity, the wholeness, huh? the righteousness, the faithfulness of God. is being revealed in you through the spirit that lives in you. So he said, he don't just say it to you and hope, say you remember that he said it to you. He said, he has poured of himself his spirit into you. To be that witness in you. To be that one that keeps testifying to your spirit. You are more than a child of man. You are a child of God. Come on somebody. And if you are hearing that you are a child of God. Why are you so broken that you are losing the position? As child of man. Lord of mercy. I'm talking to somebody tonight. And somebody need to hear and shout. Hallelujah. Lord of mercy. And that's why I refuse to wallow. And ball in sympathy. Huh? Not know and know the truth. Because when you know the truth. It sets you free. Glory to God. I'm not just believing the truth. I know the truth. I don't tell somebody I believe my name is. I know what my name is. I don't tell somebody I believe I'm a man. I know I'm a man. But it says, when you know the truth. Hallelujah. It's a knowledge that hit your spirit that the world. Circumstances and evil cannot take away. Hello, somebody. You got it? And that's what secures your position and secures your possession. You got it? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Give him praise. Jesus declared to his disciples after he died. He died. So they watched their leader died. And that played a great role on their heart for them to say man he died the prince of life laid down his life the giver of life laid down his life come on somebody and he says he even he when they watched him died and see what men did to him they lost faith remember when he appeared to them what they said we believed that this man was the Christ. They don't say we believe. They say we believed that he was the Christ. Their faith had been shaken by his death. And he had to appear to them. To console them. Eh? And to remind them of what scripture said. He never reminded them about how they feel. He reminded them about the word. In other words, he's not reminding them about the flesh. He's reminding them about the spirit. Can I talk to somebody here? Hallelujah. My God, and when you're talking about spirit, those who want to wallow in the flesh don't like the spirit talk. Because there's an urgent pull on them to embrace flesh and not to pay attention to the spirit. Come on. Well, what did Jesus say to them? They didn't realize at the time they were talking to Jesus. They thought they was talking to a stranger who didn't know what happened in the city. Because he don't look sulky and solemn like other people. 
So, so they say, man, you don't hear what's happening. You don't hear what they do to Jesus who we believe was the Christ. Huh? He said, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then one of whose, one of whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known the things which happen there in these days? And he said to them, what things? So they said, man, this man look like him. <laughs> him out of it. He's not up to date with news, man. Him. This man not look like him follow news report and keep himself. He's slow. But he actually showed that he's there who's slow. Watch what he said to them. He says, he said to them, what things they said to him? The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And what? And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. And look what they said in verse 21. We were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. We were hoping. Come on. They are not hoping so now. They say, we were hoping, but since he's dead, that hope is gone. He says, indeed, beside all this today is the third day since these things happened. Only three days later since it happened. And yes, he says, the certain woman of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. Why would they be astonished and Jesus told them? The third day be rose. Come on. Didn't even the Pharisees go to and the chief priests go to to Pilate to tell him to secure souls as they because they know he said he would raise on the third day. So how his own disciples didn't believe when they heard he was rose? Why did the word of his resurrection astonish them? Lack of faith. Death blew their faith away. Come on. Come on now. You're hearing it. Huh? And when they did not find his body, they came saying what? That they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. Then he said to them, what did he say to them? Oh, wise ones. You are the wise ones. He said, wise ones. When people lack faith, they're not wise. <laughs> you have to understand that. He says, oh, foolish ones. And what? They thought he was slow because he didn't know what was happening in all Jerusalem. But they were the ones slow. Slow of heart to believe in all what? The prophets have spoken. You're slow to believe scripture. You're quick to believe world report and world news. But when we're giving you scripture and word, your heart's slow to receive it. So your heart moves more to world news than to word from the gospel. So does that make you a true believer? No. Come on, somebody. So he, he said, this was the position they're in. And then he had to open up scriptures to them. He had to show them why Christ had to die. Because they didn't want to accept his death. From the day he announced to them he's going to die, they kept denying and walking away from him. Because they didn't want to accept. No, you're the Christ. You mustn't die. You must live forever. Mm, not so. He says, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into what? He said, that's how he come into glory. He can't come into glory in this fleshly, carnal, lowly body. Come on, somebody. 
It is said this body was the glory of God to make we leave it. Come on. So he says, is, is, he has tears of death to enter that one. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he says, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning what? Himself. Then they drew near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would have gone further. Huh? Praise God. Hallelujah. But they constrained him saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening. And the day is far spent. And he went in to the stay with them. And it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and gave it to them. They noticed the way this man lifted up bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them it reminded them of someone that triggered their memory to who was before them come on somebody and it says then their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished from their sight he's in body yet still he can vanish so he's being alive was not alive in the flesh as they knew in the flesh because this flesh could vanish lord of mercy come on somebody he vanished from their sight come on so a person will say that's your spirit but jesus appeared to them and said come on feel me man spirit don't have flesh and bone and sat down and eat with them. No, so. And she said, Don't be not sit down and eat food. Come on now. He said, No man, come on, check this. It's real. I'm alive. So he, he showed Thomas, say, Come on, push your hand in my in my hands and in my side. Come on. Because he said, if I don't push my hand in his wounds and his, I will never believe that he's alive. Come on. But Jesus says, Thomas, you believe because you see, you know. In other words, your faith is, 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 is vision based. Is based upon your, your physical sight. And not upon the integrity of the word of God. You believe because you see, Thomas. But blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. I have not seen, but I believe uh, that it made Caesar alive. I have not seen, and I believe Sister Louis is alive. I have not seen, but I believe Kemar is alive. Anyone die to this house, the Lord, show me to them. Show them to me. And I've not, be, I've not been dreaming and seeing them all the years they have been here until they died. And saw them in, in resurrection state. That they are alive. But I didn't see them come back in a physical body to me. But the Lord showed me they are alive. So did God show me a lie? Come on. Hello. My God. You need to believe the gospel. I say you need to believe the gospel. Thomas said, he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look in my hands. Reach your hand here, put it into my side. Do not be, be unbelieving. Do not be what? Unbelieving. In other words, you can choose to be believing. Or you can choose to be unbelieving even with the evidence before you. Come on. It's your choice. I can make you believe what you don't want to believe. Even Jesus was showing that to Thomas. Because Jesus is holding his hand and said, put it here and do not be unbelieving. Come on. And Thomas answered and said to him, what? My Lord and my God. Come on. 
He didn't just call him master, but call him his God. And Thomas, huh? Jesus said to Thomas, because you have seen me, Thomas. If you never see me and feel me physically, you wouldn't believe say I'm alive. <laughs> and many are still like that. He says, because you have seen me, you have believed. But he says, blessed, here's the blessing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Come on now. Hello. Oh, that song. That's true faith, dear. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Huh? Come on, somebody. Eternal life is the God kind of life. And the children of God are characterized by this life. Huh? Eternal life is not mortal life. And having eternal life does not mean that you will not lose mortal life. Having eternal life doesn't mean that you will not suffer physical death. Jesus had it and he experienced physical death. Come on. Mortal life was given to us by our parents. Through physical means. Huh? But eternal life is given to us by who? By God through his word and his Holy Spirit. That's how we receive eternal life. Anytime we forsake the word and it's not embracing the work of the Holy Spirit and things say no, you're going to work something of yourself and do something. You're not operating like a child of God. Come on now. You got this? It is the Spirit who gives life. That's what Jesus said. Huh? In John 6 verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. That's Jesus' words. It is the spirit. Huh? Who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The word he said that I speak to you. Our spirit and their life. Come on. But Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? That's 68 to 69. To whom shall we go? You have the words of what? It is the word that gives them that life. It's not the flesh they have on and how long they have on that flesh that gives them the life. It's the words that they receive from the preacher that give them that life. Because the word is from God. And the word of the spirit and life of God in it. Do you understand this? So he says then, you have the words. That's what Peter said. You have the words of eternal life. And also we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ. The son of the living God. Eternal life is in the word of the Lord. Eternal life is what? In the word of the Lord. Outside of Christ we cannot have that life. Eternal life does not begin when a child of God dies in physical life. It starts here and now when one believes in the Son of God and abides in him in his teachings being born again of the water and of the spirit come on somebody do you believe that paul warned the brethren about this life that this life you can lose this eternal life by what you entertain by going back to old habits old behavior because that life can become contaminated do you hear me and if it becomes contaminated it disqualifies you from the ownership of becoming god's true children huh is in first thessalonians 4 first thessalonians 4 verse 1 to verse 8 huh 
Paul says, finally then, brethren, we urge and exalt in the Lord Jesus that you should what? Abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk. How you ought to what? Walk and to please God. He said, we didn't just tell you. We lived it before you. Come on. How you ought to walk and what? Please God. For you know what commandments we gave you. He said, we gave you commandments. That recommendation. Commandments from the Lord. Huh? Those commandments came to us from the Lord and we gave them to you. And so, he says, for this is the will of God. Your what? The will of God is not that you live forever in your flesh. The will of God is not that you live a hundred and two hundred. He said, it's for you to be sanctified. Pure. For you to be what? Hallelujah. He says, this is the will of God. Your sanctification that you should abstain from sin. Come on, sexual immorality. And that each of you should know how to what? Possess his own vessel in what? Sanctification and in honor. And not in the passion of lust like who? The Gentiles who do not know God who are ignorant. That no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in the matter. Because what? The Lord is a avenger of all such that do such things. As we also forewarned you and testified. Yeah? In other words, they were warned before. And he said there were testimony given about that life and about those who oppose that teaching. What would happen to them? Huh? He says, for God did not call you to what? Uncleanness. What he called you to? But in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man. Who does he reject? But God was also giving us his Holy Spirit. He said, why do you think you get the Holy Spirit? Joseph say you, you feel goosebumps and you feel an anointing and shout hallelujah. You jump onto some card wheels and speak in tongues. Prophesy and say man who And still entertain sin in your heart. He says no. That's not the purpose. You must be wise. Those who are wise he says. They don't just hear the word but they are doer of the word. No sir. They don't get excited about the message and then don't do it. There's a parable Jesus gave about wise and foolish virgins. Huh? In Matthew 25. Hallelujah. Matthew 25 verse, reading from verse 1. Hallelujah. From verse 1 to verse 13. Can look at that he says then the kingdom of heaven shall be like to ten virgins who took their lamps they all ten of them took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom now five of them were wise and five were what foolish those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them they took lamps but don't bring no extra container of oil to put in the lamp when the oil in the lamp is used up. They were foolish. Come on. Hello. Hello. Mm. He says, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Both the wise and the foolish all slept. But at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish one said to the wise one, Give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. In other words, the oil that was there during the time of their wait was now used up. 
And now they need it more. Huh? And calling on the wise ones that are the extra, that was pouring the extra now into their lamps to give them some of what they had. Huh? Hello? Come on now. But the wise answered saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. Come on, what we have is just enough for us. Come on. You can't keep depending on our extra to keep you. You need to have your own extra. You better believe this. The wise is no less we should not have enough. In other words, if we give you out of this, what we have may not be enough for our journey. And both of us end up without no light. Both of us end up in darkness. Come on now. Say, you go get your own. Come on now. You go rather to who sell and buy for yourself. They had the money to buy. All along and did not. They rather to sponge off the wise one that invests and use their money to buy it. To secure them having more. Come on. Hello. And while they went to buy the bridegroom already came and those who were ready with him huh, to the wedding and the door was shut they went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut and afterwards other virgins came also saying Lord, Lord open to us in other words we, we already know <laughs> come on but he answered and said as surely I say to you, very, very, I say to you, I do not know you. Come on. The same statement he who say, you lawless ones. You're called virgins, but you know what you ought to do. And you're not doing it. But you still want marriage to the bridegroom. And he said, uh-uh, you're not getting it come on so what the lord said to them this is what the lord said to his disciples watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour huh? in which the son of man is coming come on somebody i said it here before you don't know the day nor the hour when you will die and you don't know the day nor the hour when the Lord shall come. So you say, what state should your soul be in? Readiness. It's not about how long you live. Not about how healthy your body is or how much money you have. Or how much people like you. It's not about how much trips you make around the world and how much you enjoy in this world. It is about your readiness. What we said, what we read from from First Thessalonians, that it is about your sanctification. That is the will of God for you. It is about your what, and if you're not sanctified and ready, <laughs> you are going to be disqualified for this gathering. Come on, somebody, and the Lord wants you to be ready. But do you want or but do you want it? You want to be ready like that? Or are you waiting on the last minute? <laughs> on the last minute work as them. <laughs> Hallelujah. What we are saying to you, this is what you are being prepared for. Do you believe that? And if you believe it, then you must know. That there is more working for you. Than those that are working against you. Because God will for you to be sanctified. Long before you will to be sanctified. So the only one can stop it. Is you. 
not the devil not the world not the circumstance you because God willed it for you before you willed it for yourself so all you have to do is connect and agree cooperate and humble yourself to him and let him do the work huh and trust in the work that he's doing that it is well done and you will meet his approval because he will not speak against his own work come on hallelujah and that's the work we call to it's called the life of the kingdom is eternal life huh and that life is a life of holiness righteousness faithfulness is embracing the nature and the character of God within us that has been displayed through our lives daily as Paul said I live yet not I but it is what Christ who lives in me and the life I now live he said that I live in the flesh he says I live by the faith in the son come on of God so he's living by the faith of Christ being in him that Christ is living that life through him and he trusts that life in Christ Christ is his life come on and those who believe Christ is their life don't are not distorted and destroyed by this life because they count themselves dead to this one already what they're looking forward to is the fulfillment they are eagerly groaning for that full manifestation to be clothed with that body huh that will not perish hello somebody and Paul calls that a spiritual body huh glory to God somebody give him the praise all right questions comment answers we use up as much time as we can because we started a little late so we had to put in some extra to give it a time to get the word and get enough of the word within a given time amen hallelujah so we are looking for questions to be asked and comments to be given those who are watching online of course can pose your question or comments and those who are here can do the same praise god yes go ahead good night apostle good night everyone um thanks for the word apostle um mm -hmm. you know the points that stood out to me where um was where you mentioned you know the tent being the physical body is yes. temporary but you know you always remember <laughs> that but never i didn't think about you know the body that god is creating for us the building mm -hmm. as he made reference to you know it's a permanent structure so that's one of the points that stood out to me and also you know we know as christians that we're supposed to be you know looking forward to the return of christ but you know the message that you preach tonight it kind of put like a, a emphasis or like a push out point for us to literally be mindful of that day mm -hmm. and not just for ourselves but to also remind others around us mm -hmm. you know that you know you need to get your life in order because a lot of persons be saying yes i know that god is real <laughs> and yes i want god that, to do that for me but they're not making the move they want everything god to supply them with stuff but they don't want to make the move to have their life in line with him so i want mm -hmm. to thank you for reminding us of that so that we can you know be proactive instead of reactive praise god oh, the, the, many people are waiting to respond to events and experiences rather than preparing for that great event and the lord says this is what he's preparing us for hallelujah this very thing hallelujah and we don't want to miss that preparation date praise god and he's saying you don't know when the time is that he will come just not like you have an ending time or abundant time to do it he says no get it in order now man and maintain that order yeah praise god hallelujah anyone else praise god thank you lord thank you jesus praise the name of jesus Mm. Hallelujah. 
God is showing to us that the whole term of our calling is more than just what we enjoy here in this life. What we enjoy here in this life is not against our faith to have enjoyment and pleasure and luxury and wealth and things in this life. But it says, if you make that become your primary focus, then when you have not explored all of those options, you will find it as a great loss. Huh? Because you are not mindful of what is most important. And the, king, the gospel, the word of the kingdom, is to bring you in focus with the kingdom of God. That the kingdom of men is fading out, but the kingdom of God is permanent. He rules in heaven and he rules in the earth. Huh? He said that to the disciples in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Jesus came and speak unto them saying all power is given unto me both in heaven and in earth that was already declared over 2000 years ago and that word has not changed god is still reigning even now although some people make it seem like no from that time he died and gone the world get much worse so now god losing some of his reign so if you don't make yes come the devil will and take all over not true it, 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 the hebrew writer said the scepter of his kingdom is not broken the scepter of it, in other words he rules forever it's not temporary it's not based on what you see around you and what men are doing through rebellion and disobedience to god god still rules and every resistance and rebellion will be dealt with accordingly. Amen. And so we must know that he rules. All power belongs to him. And he told us that he's not just staying with him, but it's also being released to us who believe in him. Huh? Praise God. For he said it in Acts 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is what? come upon you hallelujah and you shall be what witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and judea samaria and even unto the uttermost part of the earth yeah hallelujah so he's not keeping it from himself he wants us to experience that power and he also wants us to experience that glory and that glory is not coming in its fullness till this body is put off because that glory is not for this body. <laughs> Come on. That's why Paul said the outer man is perishing. But the inward man is being renewed. Day by day. Huh? From glory to glory. Come on. So he said the word of eternal life you're receiving. Is releasing that glory and power of God in your spirit man. Come on conform you to the very image of his son jesus christ and bring in the full experience as true sons of god and so god wanted to have it all hallelujah he's not hiding or holding or refraining from these things but sin is what is totally against and that cannot be a part of our lives as children of god and when that is no longer part of our lives then we need to embrace what is coming will be greater than what we are leaving behind because if we consider what we're leaving behind as a great loss then it says we'll have occasion to return and the return will not be nothing good you got it mm -hmm. that's why we're being declared this word today that we understand the dynamics of the kingdom of god and calling of God upon our lives to believe the message and to keep on believing the message. Yeah? That we don't just say yes, we believe it, and then when circumstance arises like we never heard it, you come as what James called forgetful hearers. Huh? Looking in the mirror, but then forget what we see in the mirror. He start when it says mirror is not talking about just looking in a mirror glass, but it's talking about the word of god you are focusing on the word and what the word shows you you must retain it that you don't just as soon as you take your eye off it so 
you'll forget what it is say come on so it says those are forgetful ears and they're in fact deceive themselves come on because it's not the ears of the word that is blessed it is the doers of the word and many are not doers yet they only hear it and say it stably but when the time come and trouble arise for them to do what the word say they tell us well you know how i feel it's not how you feel when the time come is what the words say and now you got to get that to your mind and to your head that it is not about what you feel mm. come on it's about what the word says glory to god and those that live by that principle will indeed reap its full rewards as god has intended for you and for as many as believe will experience the power and grace of god in their life amen praise god any more comments or questions it's true now any online there okay praise god bless the lord come on bow your heads in prayer we're gonna pray father we thank you for your word thank you that you have declared your word for us to hear and to believe we can't force people to believe and receive this word now to apply it it's for those who truly desire it who truly hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled hallelujah for you said we should not cast pearls before swines or give what is holy to dogs because they don't value it but those who truly value it will run with it and it will bear fruit in their lives and much fruit and fruit that remains we thank you for the grace to do so your anointing that is released in the house to all who believe and entrust their lives to the word that the power of the word will manifest and you said you sent your word and healed our diseases you are the lord our healer you heal of us of all infirmities of all sicknesses of all dysfunctions and the in ineffectiveness in our lives that was virtue carnality and the flesh and sin and bring us in the fullness of the life of god in christ as true children of god we embrace that life now lord let that life burn out flush out everything the enemy has sown to our hurt in the name of jesus divine healing be released now over the body of christ divine health be released right now over the body of christ hallelujah divine provision be released over the body of christ divine protection be released over the body of christ for in you we live and move and breathe and have our being thank you lord we bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to share the word with you. Time to release you, give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your hearts. And then while you're doing so, we'll give the final word to those who are watching online. Praise God. Those who are watching online and watching Increasing Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. We want persons to gravitate to the message because we know the power in the message is able to bring us in the life of God in Christ and to have a true inheritance in him that is eternal, that is unshakable, Hallelujah, that is abounding greatly unto all who believe and embrace the fullness of the word and his Holy Spirit. And so we pray that you'll be one of them that will embrace the word and experience the life of God in Christ that he declares is yours through the word and through his Holy Spirit. And so right now we pray that you get a book. You have a book out there. It's called the Gospel of the Kingdom. Tag the gospel that Jesus preached. It's on Amazon.com. You can go on Amazon.com. 
type in Richard Fagan and the search and you'll see the book come up it's called the gospel of the kingdom the gospel that Jesus preached we take all the many scriptures from the gospel and place them together it's not all that is there but we just put them closely together in that one book not to give you a foundational understanding of the gospel that Jesus preached and we believe you what you have learned otherwise can be built on it and will give you a greater understanding of God's will and God's purpose in your life praise God and so we encourage you to do so get the book order it online it can be also downloaded to Kindle to your device to read at your own convenience and of course it will help to solidify your faith in the Lord and every wave of attack of the enemy to put you in a position to get greater victory and greater testimonies of the presence and power of God in your life and that's our hope and our prayer for you hope that you really use this to build your faith and that God be glorified in you praise God you can also see more of the teaching on Facebook send a friend's request to Richard V. Fair and he'll be plugged into the live stream we have five live stream services per week and all of them are streamed on Facebook so you can get more teachings on the subject and also you can look for us on YouTube subscribe to our YouTube channel and of course you'll see we've added more scripture to the YouTube version for those who want to take notes and search scripture with scripture that you get a greater understanding to defend their faith in the Lord that's done made possible for you on our YouTube channel so look for both and you can also know more about us on our website it's increasingfaithintl.org that's increasingfaithintl.org you can go on the site and learn more about us and see what we are doing with different areas from ministries and different areas that we are ministering the word written text and video that person will help their faith to grow in the Lord Hallelujah. You can also write your praise report in the comment box on the site of all this ministry been blessing you. We rejoice to hear from you. And those who have a prayer request can write it there. We'll connect our faith with yours to see greater report and greater miracles for you. In Jesus' name. If you have the one to sow to this ministry, you can sow through the website. The information is there. Any other question, you can call me, Richard Figgin at 876-839-9390. Or eight seven six five five seven two four two seven. Looking forward to hear from you. Until next time, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You blessed tonight. Praise God. Good to have you all. Just lift those hands to the Lord and we release you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. God bless you, we good. Love you all in Jesus' name. Amen.